Hello friends, in this video I'll be discussing the various search patterns that are used to look for the survivors once you arrive and I will also cover important terms and various factors that are considered before we start the search. So let's begin. Section 12 of IAMSAR Volume 3 deals with everything that you need to know about searching. So all the patterns are described here, how it looks and what are the factors that you need to consider for planning that search. I will go through some of the important points as per examination point of view. So a question may be asked, who sends the search action plan and message? So SMC typically provides the search action plan, the on-scene coordinator and aircraft coordinator and facility on-scene implements the search action plan. There is an example which is given in the appendix B. Then all search action plan messages consist of six parts. The first part is situation, a brief description of the incident, how many persons are there, what all is required. The next part is search area, which basically gives you information about the area which is designated for the search, its size, corner points and other essential data. Third part is execution, fourth is coordination required, fifth is communication and sixth is reports. As mentioned earlier, normally SMC will determine the search area by use of search planning tools at the RCC and in cooperation with the on-scene coordinator. So there may be a question asked, what factors are considered in developing a search plan? And if we just go with common sense here, imagine that we have to look for someone so we know their position when they were in distress. After a while, if at sea, they, they would have drifted to some other position. So that is their most probable position. So that will be the first factor that I will consider where their most probable position is now. Then I have to determine how much area shall I search. Then the third point I will consider is who all is available to me. How many people have come for the rescue operation and what are the equipments they are carrying. Then based on all the resources that I have, I will select a search pattern and finally do the coordination on scene. In chapter 12, they give you a basic idea how to calculate the latest datum of the vessel which we are looking for. You see in the diagram below, datum 1 is the position from where the distress was given. By the time search party has reached on scene, some time has already elapsed. So that will be the drift distance and we'll get the final datum datum 2. There are two forces at sea which are causing a drift. First is leeway because of wind and then the total water current. As you can see in the above diagram, we write a vector for both leeway and total water current and we get the final drift distance. If the survivors are using a life raft, then we have another help that is provided in chapter 12. This is called life raft leeway. So what kind of life raft is there on, with the survivors? Is it without drogue, with improved bala system, with drogue, with drogue, canopy not deployed. So based on that, you'll get different leeways that the life raft will experience. And you can calculate the datum too as per that. There are certain technical terms that a sailor must know. One of which is sweep width. It is an index or measure of the ease or difficulty of detecting a given search object with a given sensor under a given set of environmental conditions. You may remember this metaphorically. Let's say you drop a diamond in your house. Now you have to sweep the whole house to find the diamond. So how long should that broom be held so that each width, each time you're stroking your floor, you'll be able to search it easily. And if you finally sweep a diamond during your stroke, at what distance from you would you be easily be able to see it? That they have a calculation which is sweep width corrected is equal to sweep width which is uncorrected multiplied by the weather factor. And where do we find this sweep width uncorrected and the weather factor? Those are provided in this same chapter and here is the table. Let's say for example we are looking for four persons in a life raft and metrological visibility is 10 nautical miles. So I will see 4 person 10 nautical miles. So it will be 4.2 nautical miles uncorrected sweep width for that particular condition. Similar table is available for the helicopter and a fixed wing plane. 
and this is the table for weather correction factor so if i read the top row if wind condition is 0 to 28 kilometers per hour and c is 0 to 1 meters at height then the correction factor will be 1 in which case your uncorrected sweep width is equal to your corrected sweep width and if the weather gets rough your corrected sweep width will reduce next term that you must know is track spacing most search patterns consist of straight parallel or equally spaced tracks covering a rectangular area and the distance between those is called a track spacing then the next term is coverage which is a ratio between corrected sweep width to the track spacing s and the recommended coverage for most situation is one which means the spacing between the tracks is equal to your space width which is corrected the question that may be asked is what is the searching speed and what are the factors which decide the searching speed so there are three points to it first is that all the vessels performing the search must proceed at the same speed as directed by the on-scene coordinator so if all have to proceed at the same speed that means all vessels must proceed at the maximum speed of the slowest vessel present under the prevailing conditions and finally in case of restricted visibility the on-scene coordinator may order a speed reduction now that the datum is clear and important definitions related to search are clear the next step is deciding on the most probable area so from the datum you draw a circle using a certain radius and then you make tangent on that circle and form a square this square is subdivided into many parts based on the available facilities on scene to calculate this radius we have two methods one is if the search must commence immediately assume r equals to 10 nautical miles and if there is time available you can make a calculation using the below formulas which are basically calculating how much area a vessel can cover in a certain time then that same area will be covered by the other units assuming that you have the final area and then you do a back calculation area equals pi r square you find out the radius let's discuss various search patterns now first is expanding square search this is used when you are pretty sure about the location of the search object this starts from the datum position appropriate for vessels or small boats to use when searching for a person in the water that has no leeway and due to the small area involved multiple vessels and multiple aircrafts are not required accurate navigation is required so the first leg is usually oriented into the wind you can see this is the expanding square search we start at the datum we move a distance s into the wind then another s 90 degree on the starboard and then after every two leg we increase the distance by s a fixed wing aircraft cannot make this expanding square search if the s is less than two nautical miles next type of search pattern is sector search this is most effective again when the search object is accurately known and the area is small this is used to search a circular area centered on the datum point and due to the small area involved multiple aircrafts and vessels are not required and aircraft and a vessel may be used together to perform an independent search searches of the same area a suitable marker is usually dropped for reference the search pattern radius is usually between 5 and 20 nautical miles for aircrafts and 2 to 5 nautical miles for vessels after each leg an alteration of 120 degrees to starboard is usually made in this search pattern an aircraft or searching vessel will pass the center of a circle and go along the diameter once it reaches the other end of the area it will alter 120 degrees to starboard along the arc and then once it again touches the arc of the circle it will alter to 120 degrees and will keep doing it unless it has finished and will reach the same starting position then there may be a second search in between these areas which are covered to do that again when starting from the same initial position when the aircraft or vessel reaches the center it makes an alteration of 30 degrees to starboard at the center of the circle this is a very common question asked by the surveyor during oral question that during the second leg what alteration will you make so it's 30 degrees between the first leg to get to the second leg 
Next search pattern is trackline search. This is used when an aircraft or vessel has disappeared without a trace along a known route. Often this is the initial effort because it's very easy to implement and start. In such situations, aircrafts are frequently used due to their high speed and aircraft search height is usually 300 to 600 meters during daytime and 600 to 900 meters at night. There are two kinds of pattern which may be done on this kind of search. One is called trackline search return and another is called trackline search non-return. In the above diagram, you can see the top one which is return. As you can see, it is using half of the sweep width from the track of the missing aircraft. Because of this, the same area will be searched twice. But in the non-return, as you can see in the diagram below, the same area will not be sweeped twice. Aircraft will sweep a certain area, then it will sweep the adjacent area. The next search pattern is parallel track search. This is used when the survival location is uncertain and a large area is involved to be searched. These searches, a large area is divided into many sub areas and it is given to different facilities to search. The commence search point is always the corner and one half track space inside the rectangle from each of the two sides forming the corners. Search legs are parallel to each other and to the long sides of the sub areas. As you can see in the diagram above, leaving half of the space width from the rectangle starting at the corner and then just going along the leg parallel to the length of the area which needs to be covered and then altering the course half of the track spacing before. In case of availability of two ships as the diagram given on the left you can see there are two tracks from the datum one vessel will start on the starboard of it and one on the port of it and it'll keep creeping on the sides. In case of three ships, there is pattern three, which is given on the right. There'll be track one, track two, and track three. And in case of four vessels available, this is the pattern. There'll be track one, track two, track three, and track four. All vessels covering similar kind of area, moving at the same speed. And here is a diagram. If even more facilities available, then a straight line is given to all the vessels. They are doing track one, two, three, four, five, and with the more vessels, they just take a single track and keep moving along the area. Next searching pattern is coordinated vessel aircraft search pattern. This is normally used if there is an on-scene coordinator present to give direction and to provide communication with the participating craft. This search pattern is also called creeping line search coordinated CSC. And in this search pattern, mostly aircraft does all the searching while the ship steams along the course at a speed as directed by the on-scene coordinator so that the aircraft can use it as a navigational checkpoint. The aircraft is basically using the vessel for making correction on its track and because searching is being carried out by the aircraft the probability of detection increases. Ship speed is going to vary depending on the aircraft speed and it can be calculated using the given formula. So this is how the pattern looks like. The vessel is maintaining its track and the aircraft uses the vessel as his reference point to make correction in its course and it goes along the search area quickly. There are other search patterns also which are discussed in this manual utilized to make a search and rescue operation on land like this contour search which is used for searching mountain at different height. And finally a recap and a few pointers. So this is how it goes when you're initiating a search. Once the vessel has arrived to make a search, it must immediately start the expanding square search. And it would be very prudent to leave a marker at the datum which can be used throughout the search. Once more search facilities have come, the on-scene coordinator will decide on the search pattern and start. In case of good weather, the first facility shall continue with the expanding square search and in case of restricted visibility. The expanding square search may be called off and then it should continue with the parallel track search. Expanding square search and the sector search are used when we know the location of the survivors very accurately. There is often a question in the MMD orals that what kind of search will you carry out for a person missing on board. In case of a missing person and without any accurate position where he may have gone overboard, track line search is the first search that you will start. And parallel track search is used when 
the area is very large and we are not sure about the position of the survivors. And finally, the creeping line search coordinated in which the vessel is just providing as a reference point. And the aircraft is carrying out all the search operation. I hope this was a useful video for you. Please leave a feedback through the comments. Thank you for watching.